I remember I met Makansim when we were flown to uh, Lokitang from Kitale. We saw a nation and we said to ourselves, now who is this man? I think it was Kenyatta who recognized him. Say, Miss Makansing. Oh, so we were just wondering, this is where he hid him from the public. Because for four years, three, four years, oh, we had not heard anything about it, about him. Some even said he might have been sent back to India or he might have uh, been silenced somehow. And, and uh, oh, later on, we quickly found out that it was Mackenzie. And uh, he did this solidarity. Never give up. Mackenzie was devoted and detained in 1950, and he was sent to Lokitong in the Northern Frontier District. In 1952 to 3, the Kafanguria 6 trial took place, and Kafanguria 6 was then imprisoned in Lokitong. So the story is that it was a hilly sort of area. So they were on one side, and across the gully, these six, they saw this bearded turban Asian gesticulating with both hands, almost like showing solidarity. And he started sending them copies of his East African standard, which he used to get from the police lines. And in it, he would write small notes, and they began to communicate. But it didn't last long, because the colonists got onto it. And within a, about two weeks, Makan Singh was then moved on to Maralal. And from then on, whenever Jomo Kenyatta was moved to Maralal, Makan Singh was moved to Dol Dol. But they were not allowed anymore to meet together. As if that was not enough. They were so frustrated that they even decided to persecute him while he was there. So, in fact, one of the DOs said to um, Makan Singh that if he cannot prosecute you, at least we can persecute you. They made difficulties for him every step of the way. Everything that he wrote was censored. Everything that he received was censored. By rights, his family should have been allowed to visit him regularly and live with him. They didn't let him meet his son for many, many years until he, he left for his further studies in India. And finally then, he got to meet his son. In 1957, his mother, who had been very ill, passed away. And a request was made that he should at least attend the cremation. But he was absolutely refused to go down to Nairobi for that. Jomo Kenyatta was released in uh, August 1961. Pio Gama Finto was released uh, three years earlier. But Makan Singh was not released till October 1961. He was the last detainee to be released. Singh came out of uh, detention in 1961. Um, we had great hopes uh, in Kenya, not just for Makan Singh, but for a whole new Kenya that would be a country that would benefit the people of Kenya. However, very soon we found that the very people who had been his one-time comrades, people who had led the struggle, had begun to change their colors. And vested interests had come in. The colonialists 
had selected various leaders who were useful to them and done away with others. And so they, you found that Makan Singh was, became part of that group of people who were really no more welcome in the new Kenya. At the time of our release, some of the colleagues who pretended to be our friends became the, uh, our bitter enemies. You see, with uh, Makan Singh being a nation who uh, was expected to be quiet and uh, law-abiding, even if he was not law-abiding, but keep off from politics, they, they had to be suppressed that way. While we people, uh, some of us, came out, asked for positions, and were given positions, there was a direct appeal to us not to take people or, or rely on people like Makan Singh because he was a leftist. I remember that. They labeled the, him a leftist. When we were at Karoleni, Makan Singh said, if they call me a, a communist, I am a communist. But he was not a communist by, by the way that the uh, Europeans used to say that he was a communist. He was extremely highly principled. I mean, the type of principles that you only find in people like Gandhi, maybe Mandela, because they are the type of people who would just not listen to anything outside what they believe in. When he came back to Nairobi, which is released, the next morning he was going to give a press interview. And he discussed with me. He says, in Pala, I'm tomorrow I'm going to be interviewed. And one of the questions they are going to ask me is that, are you a communist or not a communist? And we discussed it. And the next morning, it's true, he said that I was a communist, I am a communist, and I shall remain a communist. I think it was that thing that Kenyatta and him, they changed their roots. Because people like Makhan Singh, they were not politicians. They were great nationalists. And the great nationalists don't change their path. So Makhan Singh did not change, but other world changed. And therefore, he had to pay a price for that thing. Because after independence, when he was released, he was not taken back into Tarianism. He was not taken back into politics. He was not given any work to do substantially or whatever. So therefore, he spent most of his time in writing the history of the Tarian movement. He finished both his volumes. Makhan Singh, as I said, increasingly became sidelined and um, becoming a player in history. He really turned now to just recording history and that's when he started writing the history of the trade union movement. Uh, so he was less and less uh, in the public eye. Sure, we were in a Kenya at that time where all our heroes were forgotten. Uh, our, all our great patriots were not remembered by the leadership of this country. But no, the people of Kenya have never forgotten Makhan Singh. History has to be written about the previous leaders, Makhan Singh being the leading a star in those past leaders for the new leadership to have a vision out of those leadership to understand why they fought why they called a strike why they stood up for other people why they gave their life because they gave their life see for others the short period that i spent in nairobi after his release not once did i hear him complain or even mention anything about not being given the recognition by the current ruling government. Whenever anyone raised this issue, his answer was, I did the work not for receiving any rewards. A totally selfless, unmaterialistic person. However, he did become very quiet and withdrawn. His passing away devastated me. 
as that is when it dawned upon me that my communication with my father will always stay unfinished.